السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاك الله خير سيدي that was such a beautiful and heartfelt and moving dua it's a great honor to be part of this virtual uh, coming together because in reality, the coming together is not the coming together of bodies, but it's the coming together of hearts. And when hearts are connected, then distances are folded up. Um, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us on this blessed night, as he grants those who gather in his houses, because the intention of each one of us was to be spending these nights in devotion in the masjid, in taraweeh, in prayer and supplication, and i'tikaf, ya rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us the light of faith so that we rely not on our actions and not what is going on around us in the world, but that we rely on him and that we place our hope upon him a hope and a reliance that is unshakable so that if we err or fail, if we sin or stumble, or if things don't work out the way that we wish, our hope is unshaken because our hope, Ya Allah, is in you. Our trust and reliance, O Allah, is upon you. We ask you, O Allah, for the insight that we have fear of no one but you so that we don't fear our failings, that we don't fear what is going around us in the world, that we fear none but you, but with a fear that causes us to be humbled, a fear that with hope makes us turn to you and to have the urgency to pursue your good pleasure. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you grant us the insight in these days of devotion by which we realize that our place in life is where you have placed us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, so that we don't seek other than what you are seeking from us, where you have placed us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, so that if you have placed us in the world of responsibilities, that we fulfill those responsibilities in the ways that are beloved to you, with sincerity and with striving, with high intentions, and that if you've placed us in circumstances where we are far from the world of means, that you grant us the grace to make the most of that time that you open up so that we direct ourselves in devotion, we direct ourselves in healing, we direct ourselves in reconnecting with you and reconnecting with family and friends and those networks of mercy. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you, that you grant us in these days in which you have manifested something of your majesty to us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you grant us the insight to recognize that we are not the ones in control, but it is you, O Allah, who is in control, that you are the Lord of majesty. And it is not for us to control the way things unfold in this life and that we gain in recognition of your glory and majesty, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you, O oh Allah, that we do not be of those who try to plot and plan every detail of our lives, but who realize that it is for, for us to strive, but that all matters in our own lives and around us are in your hands, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you that we direct our concern not to those things that are not our responsibility, because those things are your affairs, Ya Rabbil Alameen, the way things will work out, what's going to happen next week, next month. These are not where our primary focus should be, but rather that we should look carefully as to what Allah you are seeking from us and how we fulfill our duty to you and our duty to our families, our duties to our community, 
our duty to your creation in the ways most pleasing to you. Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you, O Allah, that as we close this month, the door of dua, of true asking, be open for us, that we leave the mere asking with the tongue and really learn to ask with our hearts with certitude that your answer is a guarantee, but in the way that you will and at the time that you will, not in the ways that we whimsically wish for. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you, O Allah, to grant us the light of faith, the light of certitude, so that we realize that even when we ask for things in specified times, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that your answer is a promise, but that what you choose for us and when you choose it for us and how you manifest it for us is in your merciful hands, for you are the Lord and that we are your servants. We ask you, Allah, that you grant us the, the faith and certitude and clarity so that when we experience anything of the difficulties of life and in its tests, that we are not shaken by how it affects us materially or in our health or in our wealth, but and that we don't worry that, oh, I didn't pray my taraweeh in the masjid, I didn't do this, because what you send to us is better than what we seek to send to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you, O oh Allah, that you make us realize the tremendous feast of opportunities that you send to us so that we realize that every moment of our lives is an opportunity. Every aspect of our lives is an opportunity to make us realize, O oh Allah, that we have so many ways of turning to you. We ask you that we realize that every way that you have gifted us of turning to you is a way of fulfilling our potential as human beings, as believers, as servants, as people who are grateful and who love you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you that you grant us to fulfill the potential of prayer, to fulfill the potential of charity, to fulfill the potential of remembrance, to fulfill the potential of the Quran, to fulfill the potential of reflection, to fulfill the potential of every sunnah of your beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that we can fulfill what it means to be truly grateful servants of yours, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you, O oh Allah, that you bring our religion to life, our hearts to life, our character to life, our devotion to life, our work to life, our family life to life, our time to life by gifting us with the subtle reality of sincerity because it is this subtle reality of sincerity that gives meaning and substance and light to all our actions. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you, O oh Allah, that we truly live seeking your pleasure, that we truly pray seeking you, that we truly remember you seeking you, that we truly recite the Quran seeking you, that we truly supplicate seeking you, that we truly give in charity seeking you, that we truly engage in every act of our acts of religion as an expression of seeking you, but also that we work for your sake, that no day should begin when we begin our work, except that we renew our intentions, that I am working for your sake, O oh Allah, that we never drive our cars, that we never go shopping, that we never turn on our computers, that we never open our smartphones, except with the renewal of that intent, that this is for you, O oh Allah, that we never engage in the pastimes that we like, whether we are making sour bread, or we are cooking, or we are helping someone, that we make all of this for your sake, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you grant us this sincerity in our dealings with our parents and our families, 
with our friends in the community, that you do not make our service simply fleeting and whimsical expressions of interest, but that you make it lillahi rabbil alameen, truly for your sake, O Lord of the worlds, we ask you, O Allah, that you grant us this subtle gift of sincerity. We ask you that you wash our hearts from riya, from insincerity, so that we do not seek other than you in any act of devotion, nor in any of our worldly actions. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you free, of us, free us of insincerity and any motive other than seeking your good pleasure in our devotions, in our work, in our family lives, in our service. We ask you, O oh Allah, that we be communities of light, that we make our decisions on the basis of what is it that is most likely to be most pleasing to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you that you illuminate our hearts with your love, with the love of your beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has embodied and encompassed all dazzling beauty and all virtue and all perfections. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you protect us and our families and our communities. Ya Akram al Akramin, we ask you, O oh Allah, that you protect and preserve our elders, that you protect and preserve our scholars, that you protect and preserve our masajid and our institutions, that you protect and preserve those who serve, that we, you protect and preserve our relationships, that you protect and preserve our bonds of family and friendship, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and that you protect and preserve the ummah of your beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Um, I tried. I was asked to make dua in English, and I have tried to encompass in this dua um, the first ten of the aphorisms of Ibn Ata illa Sekandari. <laughs> These were not primarily my words. I tried to paraphrase the first ten aphorisms, the hikam of Ibn Ata illa, um, taking some gleams from them in this supplication ta'ala. and I was asked to, and the supplication itself is meant also to make us reflect uh, a little bit spiritually but there's one aphorism of Ibn Atayla that I just want to touch upon very briefly right? that and this is the 13th aphorism the 13th hikmah Ibn Atayla secondary says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Kayfa yushri kukalbun, suwarul akwani muntabiatun fi mirate. How can a heart be illumined when the forms of created things are firmly imprinted in its mirror? Am kayfa yarhalu ilallah, wa hua mukabbalun bishahawate. Or how can it journey to Allah when it is tied down? by its desires. أم كيف يطمع أن يدخل حضرة الله وهو لم يتطهر من جنابة غفلاته Or how can it be avid to enter the presence of Allah when it has not purified itself, when, the heart, when this heart hasn't purified itself from the filth of its heedlessness of Allah. أم كيف يرجو أن يفهم دقائق الأسرار وهو لم يتب من هفواته Or how can it ever hope to understand the subtle realities of the meanings of faith when it hasn't yet repented from its slips? This is an amazing aphorism, right? How can a heart be illuminated, right? Because we were created with a purpose, right? We are granted a heart that has, that was born metaphysically in the divine presence. Say, Adam was created in paradise, in the in presence with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala before our bodies, our souls 
experienced the light of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then we're placed in a, in a heart, our duty in a body, the duty is to bring back that light into our hearts. Right? That is the purpose of faith. Right? That's the purpose of life. That is the potential of faith to go from mere affirmation of faith to truly seeing the light, a light we beheld before time when we said, when Allah asked us, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And we said, indeed you are, bala. Right? But we said it because we beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how can we, our hearts be illuminated find that light, finally heed the call of Allah to be close. When the forms of created things are imprinted in its mirror, your heart, which is the locus of your concern, was not created simply to worry about the stock market and the economy and these numbers and this politics and this gossip and this and this and this and this. Our hearts were created, my dear brothers and sisters, to be present with Allah. And to be present with Allah, we need to step back a little bit in our priorities and to put the first first. Because if the mirror of our heart is, full, is filled with all these other concerns, then when will it find light? And that is the first of these steps that Ibn Atayla mentions. The second step, how, uh, um, how could the, your heart ever travel to Allah when it is hobbled by your desires? Which desires? Your sinful desires. Okay? Your whims that busies you that busy you away from being present with Allah, from being pleasing to Allah, those lustful those lustful gazes, the, the the listening to things, whether it be sinful music that pollutes your soul, or listening to sinful backbiting and gossip and slander and tailbearing and all these things, that we just whimsically inclined to, just clicking on those videos one after another, wasting away hours, rather than journeying to Allah. And the journeying to Allah is not only through devotion, but the journeying to, to Allah is by connecting with our families, by connecting with our friends, by caring for others, by expressing concern in all the ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, how can we un enter the divine presence when we don't wash ourselves from the filth of being heedless of Allah? And we are in his presence, yet we absent ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine you entered the court of the king, but you ignore the king. And he is calling you. You're just looking around, staring at the walls, and there's the king. The king is present. The beloved is with you wherever you may be. Right? When we realize that and we say, how can I be absent? How can I be absent? We need to take a shower. a spiritual shower and rid ourselves of the janaba, of the, of the impurity of being heedless to Allah. How? By listening to the words of our Prophet ﷺ. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah and keep away from the acts of heedlessness. Don't do the things that the heedless do. Think of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has the time not come for those who have believed, for their hearts to become humbled before the remembrance of Allah? Okay. 
has the time not come for those who have believed for their hearts to be humbled before the remembrance of Allah. Otherwise, as Ibn Atayla closes this aphorism, how can one ever hope to understand the subtle spiritual realities of faith when we haven't repented from all our slip-ups? There's a potential in this life. That potential is to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to live a life in devotion in our work, in our family lives, in our free time, in our service, to live a life in which we are with Allah, in love of Allah, expressing love for Allah, gratitude and hope and all these meanings. But what is life? It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that goodly life, which is a life lived with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we fall short of this that he make us strive with sincerity because we are not responsible for success we are simply responsible to strive and to strive to be sincere Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa nabina muhammad miftahi babi rahmatillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وبارك الله تعالى فيكم أنتم keep us in our our family and our community over here in your prayers بارك الله فيكم شيخ فراز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله عم طيب how are you doing والله الحمد لله we we miss you استخدنا لك سيدي نحن أكثر سيدي. تاجوا مددكم سيدي هذه الأيام. لا استغفر الله البركة في أب كبركم. I I I saw once I began talking that that you you were on the on the call too. سبحان الله يعني I should I should not be speaking in front of my elders سيدي. استغفر الله ما شاء الله. أنت بركتنا سيدي. جلتمونا سيدي.